Well, hello. Welcome back to the Tail Three Cabins. Well, I think I've done it again. I've made a mess, and I'm not sure how this project is going to turn out. So, come and check it out. You may have heard me mention before that my backyard is about 90% moss and about 10% grass, if you want to include the weeds. It wasn't always like this. When I first planted the seed way back when, probably 25 years ago, um, it was lush and green, uh, never got soggy back here, and it was always kind of shady. We always had the trees back here. Last four or five years, though, it's been really hard for it to dry out. Moss is always increasing. It gets very spongy to walk on and hard to cut the grass without creating some deep rut. So this is back in May and I'm just experimenting with the rake and I heard uh, if you want to get rid of moss the first thing you should try to do is rake it out. And I was not going to take a hand rake and try to rake this whole backyard and get the moss out of it. So I thought I would take this rake off the tractor and see how it would work. It actually is not digging in as deep as I thought it would. I thought it would really be tearing up the backyard. Um, it, it does take a little bit of the moss off, but it would be very tedious, and it doesn't look like this is the way to go. It just seems what little I scrape up, I would probably just be running over the tires and just re-embedding re it back into the ground. But I gave it a good try and I thought maybe you'd want to see what my results were and if anybody else has attempted to do something similar, let me know. So I did more research and even though there's many ways you can try to get rid of it using different concoctions and mixtures you can find on the internet, I decided the best way for me was just to use some good old fashioned Roundup. Um, I had some issues with my sprayers recently. I had a couple that mounted on the ATVs and I had a couple larger ones and they all were giving me some kind of problem one way or another either with the pump motor or being clogged at the tip so I ran out to Home Depot and bought a seven dollar sprayer and I just wanted to get this over with I did it the old-fashioned way and uh, my back was kinda sore after this here I just thought I would document over a week's time show you the roundup different stages, day one, day two, three, and then one week. So that cutoff line goes to the front yard and we're going to divide this up because of our dog. We're probably going to do the front yard next year. If you watched a couple weeks ago, you know that I stayed in the house and I rented this lift. And this not only um, was helpful, but it also tore up our yard pretty good in the back. Now, about the last four or five years, as I mentioned, this seems to be a perpetual wet spot in our yard. And I do not know why. Uh, it's not a low spot in the yard. It's always um, moist there, even if it hasn't rained for a couple weeks. Um, the septic tank is not leaking. I think I would smell it. We're not getting anything off the gutters. Those are all diverted to the front. As you saw earlier, I sprayed and killed everything in the backyard, but with the passage of time and us staying in the house, weeds started to regrow and things started greening up again back there, so I'm going to have to respray it again before I do anything. This time I was not going to use my sprayer. I borrowed a buddy's. He had this 15 gallon tow behind. The easiest thing for me to do is just hook it up to the back of my tractor right now. I didn't want to take the backhoe off. Uh, I thought it would be easier. This is not going to take a long time. I also needed some DC power so I couldn't attach it to my lawnmower because I don't have access to that. So I thought this would be the quick and easiest way for me to go back there and respray the roundup. Now the way I'm going to have this set up, I'm not going to be able to reach the switch when I'm on the tractor. So I'm just going to use the plug and I'm going to plug it in and unplug it as I need to spray. This is a country way sprayer. Like as I said, it's 15 gallons. It has a little boom on it and two spray jets. 
It's supposed to spray in about a seven foot swath. I lowered the boom as low as it would go to try to keep the roundup as close to the ground and not aerosolize and hit any of the plants in our flower beds. If you notice the jets spray directly straight out the back and I wish they were directed down towards the ground so um, you, you can see the product kind of aerosolize up in the air and if it's windy especially roundup you know it's going to go other places and kill things that you don't want to be killed. I can't complain too much because this sure beats the pump sprayer and doing it by hand. I really looked into the three-point sprayers and I think that that would be the way to go for me but most of them are 40 gallons and that's just overkill for my needs. Most of the time I'm not using anything more than about 15 gallons when it comes to Roundup or any sort of um, fertilizer so it would be nice if they made a three-point. I think the smallest that I've found is maybe 25 gallons. The advantage of having a three-point or one that's mounted to your UTV or ATV would be when you want to go in reverse. So it's like backing up a trailer. If you don't have it perfect, you know, you're not going to get it exactly where you want it. Where if you're backing it up on your three point hitch or your UTV, it's going to stay true to the back end of your vehicle. So that went a lot quicker and now I just I'm flushing out with some water. I thought I would just take it down the driveway. If there's any roundup left in there I could kill off any of the weeds in the center of my driveway. If you are interested in this type of sprayer, well it does do, it probably does better than seven feet wide. Like I said, I've lowered the boom as low as it goes right now and it can go up higher. Um, so that would probably increase your spread. You can also switch it over to a hand sprayer and it has a reach of about 20-25 feet if you do the finest spray. In the future if I'm in the market for one I think I would look for a three point and then figure a way that I could mount it to my UTV. Before I start tilling there's an old stump here that I wanted to pull out and it came out a lot easier than I thought it would. And then while I was doing that, my neighbor texted me and said, uh, are you out there playing with your toy? And I said, yes. And he goes, do um, you think you have time to move a rock for me?
I had pulled this out of their woods along with another one uh, earlier in the year and I apparently where it was placed it was kind of a nuisance for them to cut the grass so they wanted it uh, relocated. All right, back to the backyard. So I mentioned the wet spot. I have this subsoiler and I thought I'd give it a try back here. If you watched me use this before, I used it to put an electric line into my shed, but the true purpose is for farmers, usually when they have a packed field and it starts collecting water in the center of the field, that they run the subsoiler through their field and create channels to help drain out the, the water and channel into different areas. And I'm kind of just going to do this in my backyard the best I can. I do have um, some wires underground and I do have a line going through the septic tank to be aware of so I cannot put a bunch of these little curves into the soil. It's still a mystery to us why it's wet there. Um, we did discuss, you know, maybe trenching it out and putting some pipe and some gravel back in there. I just didn't want to get that involved with it. I thought I'd give this a try and see if that'll make it any better in the future. The one thing that we did think of is when we built the house, there were actually little underground springs that like popped out of the sidewall when we dug for the basement. And we're wondering if that's the case here. If you haven't guessed, I'm definitely hitting a lot of tree roots and pulling up some good chunks of shale. So this area has not seen any rain in about two weeks and it's bone dry everywhere else in the backyard except for this area that I'm running through. I will admit I forgot about locking the differential when I was spinning my tires here.
Okay, looking at the timer on the bottom of the video here. I'm over the 15 minute mark. I appreciate everybody watching for now. I'm going to pick up where we left off here next week and see if I can make some assemblance of this backyard and get it back into some sort of nice pristine order. And I hope you subscribe to these videos. Hit that little bell when you want to know when a new one is coming out, especially the next one to see what happens here because I really did make a mess of our backyard. Keep an eye on us and take care everybody.